Hi, Brittany. <laughs> I caught you at the right time. Um, so, uh, if, how many people have seen Brittany's piece here? Anybody? Seen it? Seen it? <laughs> Done it. One, two, maybe four. Wait, okay. pass? Front row. I didn't, just saw up. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, the piece starts with, let's start from the beginning. So, why don't we start from the beginning? Um, you and I have known each other for quite a while. We yeah. used to play kickball at Fairview Park. Yeah. Um, known each other for like 20? No, quite less. Well, 15 less. years. Yeah, quite some time. Um, but uh, I've watched your work sort of evolve over the years. Yeah. Um, and uh, start to work with music and build music into your pieces, into your installations. Um, and uh, it's sort of I think the, the first time that like you really uh, began to work with history in a context that was also close to me was when you did your thesis project um, with the, at, the, at the, okay. the CAC, yeah. um, which was also an audio tour, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And was this sort of something that um, that you had been thinking about, like, had you been thinking about audio tours for a time, for some time? Was this part of your, like, studies? Like, was this, like, the perfect merger of your interest in history and the development of your practice? Um, where did this kind of come from? So the audio tour was a, um, something that happened because I needed to solve a problem. So it wasn't necessarily something that I was interested in or that I gravitated towards. Yeah, my master's thesis was rapidly um, approaching and uh, the first year of graduate school, I had such really bad artist block. So I, I went into grad, graduate school at a, a, a dad as a sculptor. <laughs> and I just got done making, I don't know if the artists in the room have experienced um, really bad artist block, but you keep on just producing things that are so like dumb and stupid and silly. <laughs> and everything you make and it's not working. And you're just like, what is happening to me? And um, so yeah, I was super lost, and um, the formula that I had cultivated for ooh, 15 years, I would say since I was at the Art Academy, um, it just wasn't working anymore. Um, and I needed a way out, um, and um, I had the opportunity to go down to Moog Fest, and I don't know if people know what um, Moog is, but Moog, Moog they, um, they make synthesizers. Um, and they used to hold a festival, I don't know if it still exists anymore. In Asheville, North Carolina. Yes. Festival. Yeah. Um, and they would have artists there and people um, doing really crazy things in science and tech. And um, I was down there and um, uh, I got to see Lord Anderson perform. And it was kind of like a life changing experience. I really didn't know much about Lori except for um, uh, her in, in a musical sense. Um, so I got to see um, the performance, and I was like totally like mesmerized. And everything in it that I really loved, like outside of kind of like a visual art context, where it had music and it had storytelling, and and and, uh, and it had it history. I think she told a story about her in like 1963, and like weave that into the um, uh, to the JFK administration, and like um, and then ironically, me and my friend go to a bar right after, and Lori sits right next to us, and so, <laughs> to be. for sure, and so, you know, we got to chat and talk, and so I think that that really, um, and I think, like, whenever I, and so, you know, kind of, kind of coming away from that, and, and, um, I took the summer off in, in between graduate school to, um, just not make anything, um, because I needed to just not do that, you know, I just needed to do that, just not, not be an artist, when I came back, I was like, okay, okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make sculpture, I'm gonna do this thesis, and it just still wasn't working. So then I just said, fuck it, and um, I decided that I was going to make dance pop music as my artistic practice now. It's pretty natural progression. Yeah, like I just needed to- Changing practices is the name of the uh, talk today. So oh, perfect. Um, and so I needed to escape, and I think, when I need to escape, I kind of like to do it in like punk ways. And so, you know, bringing um, a dance pop songs, you know, about lost love or just broken hearts and 
bring it to um, crit, like, you know, we're going to listen to this really bad dance music I just made. Um, you was, made them listen to your dance music. Yeah, I did. You know, to um, these, these graduate crits that I was in, everybody was making sculpture and drawing, and I was like, no, we're going to listen to this really bad pop song I just made. In what program are you using? Uh, Logic. Yeah. And um, so Thesis was rapidly approaching. And um, I was like, oh man, am I really going to present really bad pop music for my <laughs> graduate thesis? <laughs> like, is this happening? <laughs> um, but before that, um, I was kind of like dabbling, uh, you know, like with, with sounds and just kind of um, recording myself, kind of having like conversations with myself. So I was also kind of dabbling at that. And then I thought about the building and, you know, thought about sound and I was like, like this is the this is the solution to my problem. You know, I have a problem. I don't make things anymore. You know, I have to show in, in this building. What am I going to do? And um, yeah, that's how I came up with the idea for the audio tour. And the audio tour of the CAC was up for several years. Yeah, um, is it is it gone? It's <laughs> that's a great, that's a great question. It's still there. It never really got resurrected post COVID. So, oh, that's that's fine. Sure we could work on that. Though. I mean, we yeah, we, yeah, we can, yeah. And changing times, <laughs> changing practices. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, and so this was a way for uh, an audience member to come in. Yeah, uh, for sure. And see the CAC differently. Yeah. Hear about the building. And I think um, also it was able to you know um, um, you know also about shifting with Keith here. Also, shifting practices, sorry. <laughs> so Keith Benjamin um, was one of my professors in, um, in undergrad here. I, I went to Art Academy, and um, I was a drawing major, but my thesis was all sculpture. And I remember, and Keith was like, why didn't you take a sculpture class? <laughs> but, you know, going into that, you know, kind of like shifting and, and kind of like always needing to like reinvent myself to some extent. But the audio tour gave me a chance to kind of like res Resurrect, how about resurrecting some of the concepts that I'd always been interested in, which was um, uh, history. I was always super, you know, when I was little, I wanted to be um, an archaeologist. Um, and I think that, um, in a way, like, I, I'm, I am an archaeologist, you know, and, and maybe an artist second. You know, I think I kind of like, you know, and, and as my practice is going on and more and more, I think I'm more of a historian. At this point, than an artist, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, like, what, you know, like what, I, what are these things? I mean, in, so some of the pieces you did afterwards were your own personal uh, photos or photos from, um, or not personal photos, but photos from your was it found photos? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Found well, photos. That's kind of born out of yes. Great like, histories. Yeah, and I usually don't make uh, personal works of art. You know, I usually make um, works of art that, about things that are outside of myself and like very, very much so. Like the universe or history or all of this. And um, um, yeah, and that, that project was actually born uh, at, uh, out of a family that my, my grandfather had passed away. And um, all of these family photographs just came out, like thousands of them, and they were just laid on this pool table. And I was very interested in the, um, in the mental kind of like interaction that was happening with, with me and this object. So um, where I was looking at photographs that I was not present for, like photographs in the 60s and 70s of my family, and I was kind of like reinventing kind of like fictionalized histories, and I was like, I have a cinema in my mind. This is amazing, and I want to try to recreate this. So what I essentially did was I made um, cinematic soundtracks for very, very ordinary photographs um, for my family history where I wrote music, and you hear all these sounds happening, and they're very warm, and you know, nurturing. And so you moved from dance pop to... Yeah, I think that was just a, I think that was just more of a, um, I needed to, I think the dance pop was more me being an escape artist than anything. Um, so let's get to where we are now, with special collections. Yeah. Um, I spoke to you in 2019. Yeah. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Had, had a, a real, like I was loving the work that you've been making, uh, the, the way you incorporated music uh, to sort of, I would say manipulate, but I don't know if you would say that. Um, the sort of the memories that people have when they, when they experience yeah, something. It's a, it's a manipulation. All yeah. of my work is very much a manipulation. 
Um, and uh, I think I went to you and said, what, what would you like to make? And you proposed an audio tour of the Mercantile Library. Yeah. Um, what was, so, we have a lot to cover from you know, 2019 <laughs> to now, but yeah. what was the original sort of genesis for this? Why the Mercantile? Um, yeah. What was your relationship with the space like? Well, I think I was more born out of um, how little time that I didn't actually have to make something. and I. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah. And also, I wasn't allowed to make anything for a couple months there, too, from my doctor saying. <laughs> it just, just, you know, just, just because, yeah, because in the early, um, early, or like summer of 2019, I just had to take, I had taken on too many projects, and I just, like, I just burn out and my doctor was like, you're not allowed to work on anything for like three months. And so I was like, yes, yeah. so I said, like, Drew, you know, let me sign this piece in November. So really I think choose choosing the mercantile mercantile mercantile, which I'm glad I did, was really born out of like I needed to do something that uh, I've done before. Um, that I kind of like needed to plug things into. But I think um, and you turn you know when you said you know Brittany it doesn't have to be um, your magnum opus. But I think to this day <laughs> <laughs> no need to dream, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, hiring 16 people later to um, uh, to produce this thing, um, <laughs> it ended up being that, I would say. Yeah. And so, with, with the, t the time that you were allowed, um, you were envisioning a sort of uh, a guided audio tour through the Merton Teal, touching on some of the, the pieces within the space, sure. and I'm sure some of you haven't been to the the Mercantile Library before. It's a really stunning library. It's a bit hard to find, but once you discover it, um, it you feel like you're in a different world. It's a, it's a timepiece, really. Um, but so, uh, yeah, we had talked originally about what this would be. Uh, you are going to highlight some of the, 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 sculpt, the, the sculptures within the space, the busts. Um, there are many panoramic sort of drawings of Rome. We had talked about bringing in Rick Steves yeah, to do. Was, yeah, we were going to try and hire Rick Steves to do some part of the audio tour. <laughs> we had about five months to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, and as the deadline was approaching, I will say um, that I was lost. I was kind of fucked a little bit. In, in, in terms of time and, and how this thing was like, I did not have a thesis for for this tour, and I think I couldn't find one, and I think I was just really grasping at straws at that at that point, and just kind of like, you know, just kind of like gathering these these pieces that I just hope were going to fit together. Um, so it was very so when the pandemic happened, I think I was like one of the very few people that was like, "This is amazing," <laughs> you know, like. I can't believe this is happening. But also, I think what ended up being the thesis was like there was a book at the library, um, John Milton's Paradise Lost, that I couldn't stop thinking about. And Paradise Lost is a um, 17th century, um, what would you call it? Like a lyrical poem novel? I would call it that. Okay, like a lyrical poem novel. And it's essentially um, about creation of the world and the banishment of Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, from, from paradise, you know, losing paradise. And I kept on thinking about it, and I don't know why. You know what I mean? Like, where, you know, I, I, I kind of think of myself, so, I don't, I'm not going to go into that with my practice, but, yeah, I could, I could have stopped thinking about it, didn't know why. You foresaw massive uh, cultural shifts. I will say I had a premonition. Right. Um, okay, so... March 2020. Yeah. Everything shuts down. Yeah. Everybody's devastated. You're elated. I slept. Right. Is what I did. I went to bed. We didn't know what to do with not many plants. I totally felt the same way. Um, so when did you begin to start thinking about the project? <laughs> kind of pretty quickly after that. Well, I think because, you know, I started to form me, you know, I think quickly after that because then it was like, okay, I have a whole other year. Let's, let's do this. And really, I think I started thinking about I made the correlation between um, John Milton's Paradise Lost because I kept on thinking about that. You know, so I don't know if other artists experience this where you encounter things and they just kind of like float in your mind for like months and you don't really know like why it's there. 
and then like later on like things are like revealed to you like wow oh, that's why it's there um but i was like god oh, it's so weird i was kind of obsessed with this text about getting banished you know out of uh, out of paradise and i feel like i like we are experiencing that that same like expulsion from um uh from our world um, and so that i knew um so i just so i really started the project doing research about the history of the mercantile and then reading Paradise Lost. And actually, you know, expulsion is something that comes up in several moments throughout yeah. the, the piece, um, from members um, being kicked out yeah. for uh, things happening, for uh, families not renewing membership. Um, yeah, there's several kind of amazing things um, from libraries, from li librarians in the 19th century stealing funds from the library, people's books. There was a teenager in the 70s that stole over 200 periodicals at the library, and uh, the library staff like thought, like, this, this kid's amazing. He's coming every day and reading. They did not know what he was doing. Yeah, there's there's very interesting, the, the library is such an interesting past, I think, um, because it was, like, run as a collective, and there are, um, they had, they had a, a, a 15th century Bible that was very close to the time of Gutenberg from, from Germany, it would be worth like over a million dollars and it's nowhere to be found. It's gone. That kid. Um, what is it? <laughs> that kid. Who were the that, that kid, I know. I know. And the, there's so much, you know. Um, oh, I have to say that that Bible disappeared in the 19th century, so nobody working there now is like respired. I, I don't want to like paint them as this like, as this institution with like, you know, with like library, like cars everywhere <laughs> like, and like you know books that they don't know where the show so it's 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 a legit place but um not not so much well you know in, in the 19th century they had problems but there's all these sort of um connections to life and death um, yeah. of the library itself too it's yeah. it's fourth it's fourth life no in, in yes space. it burned yes it was originally founded um um by 45 merchants back back then books were very expensive um, and so um, if you were not um, if you did not come from a very very wealthy family to, to, to where you had access to books but if, if you're trying to educate yourself the best way to do that was to band with others um, and to gather all of your books so um, yeah so but it is in its, so it, it first met in a firehouse which is ironic because it burned down twice and then um, it moved to this is my college building, which was the first um, the first kind of version of, of the University of Cincinnati. And then, but it's kind of stayed in that um, on that same plot of land since then. And um, we're maybe jumping ahead, but this is the perfect time to talk about yeah, it too. Let's do it. Um, um, that lease will never die. Yes, they have um, a ten thousand year lease. <laughs> they do. It's the longest in the world. Um, they received it after I think the second fire burn after the second burning of the building. Um, the Cincinnati College gave it to the library because the library members have helped out so much. Um, yeah. And so the idea that the lease we're going to give too much away about the piece, but that the lease is uh, is likely to outlast. Yeah. There's um, a humanity. Yeah. So when I knew that, I was like, <laughs> is humanity even going to live to you know, is like, will the mercantile actually like, is is the lease gonna live longer than, than, um, than the rest of humanity? And what I found out, most likely no. There's a 5% chance that humanity will be um, alive in the next 10,000 years. So the lease will most likely outlive the species that drafted it, which is a part of the tour. And so there are tons of these, these anecdotes and these stories that are just amazing. And not just amazing for, people who care about libraries or people who care about Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, I think uh, it's a really beautiful time capsule of um, specific decades and, and, uh, and uh, generations. Um, but also, uh, your piece really beautifully addresses this specific moment as well. And um, I want to talk a little bit about the changing times and, uh, yeah, sure. and how, the, how the piece evolved. Yeah. Um, there are, I think, a, a lot of points within the, the project also focus on access, on who is in the mercantile, um, 
what who decides what is in the mercantile. Yeah. And I, I will say that I I took that so not not so much like the mercantile, but like the canon, um, and really seeing like uh, the library as the greatest as as the greatest foot footprint um, that humankind will ever leave. You know, like which is our. Um, uh, which is the k k k k k k which is the k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k k and also, you know, who, um, who were the deciders? And, you know, they're, they're all like, you know, the wealthy and the educated. Um, and in terms of the Western canon, which is, which, which is what the Mercantile has and which, what, what, um, um, what the public library has, it's, it's, it's mostly um, choices that were made by white men. And so... Um, board members. Uh, board members, you know, for sure. Um, and they tend to choose works of art. You know, works by those in the same same category. Yeah, in the same category. So, yeah. Um, and so, did you was that was that an intention? I guess well, it wasn't an intention in twenty twenty well, because you didn't have the time. Perhaps. It wasn't, and I think you know, I think having the pandemic happening, and then and then the and then the murder of George Floyd kind of like really made me. Um, you know, I think both of those things, and kind of living through through both of those things, I think it was hard not to think about um, a lot of injustices with anything I was going to work on. You know, so I think that that um, <clears throat> but that kind of like shaped a, a big part of the you know a, a big part of the piece. You know, um, and just looking at our canon like through those you know like through that lens, yeah. And so there are. There are these specific, I'm going to walk through the piece a little bit now. Yeah, sure. And so there are these specific chapters. Yeah. Oh, I should say, so it is an audio tour, but because it's in a library, it's formatted um, as an audio book. And so you can do it chapter by chapter if you choose. Yeah. And all in, it's 42 minutes? 42 minutes. 40 minutes. I had first planned on doing 25, but after two years of research, you can't. <laughs> it just happens. I think you just realized, too, that when you read it to yourself, you don't think about how I someone's going to be presented. I was like, I even timed it back in February, and I was like, true, it's, st it's still 25. I got them 25. And then, and then, but I didn't read it. I heard, I heard different voice actors to do each of the chapters. And so I think, like, once I started editing other people reading it, and then, uh, you know, and then wanting things to be slower, you know, to do the pace, and I was like, 42, but I couldn't edit anything out. Everything kind of needed to be there. I, yeah, and I think as much as I was thinking, like, oh, you should maybe tighten it up when you experience the whole thing, <laughs> there's nothing that feels right. extra. Are you glad I didn't take I'm anything out? <laughs> I'm really glad you didn't. As much as the, the, I thought about it, and then I just thought, I was like, oh, I can't. Well, um, and we should say the Mercantile Library. Um, uh, has purchased the piece. Uh, it will be a part of the collection well, at the yeah. Mercantile now. It'll be available for at least a couple of years. Uh, yeah. We were really worried. We were very, very concerned because you know, even a couple of weeks ago, I was like, "Man, I made something very beautiful, but very boring. Like something very dead." You said five people in the world would love it. Yes, <laughs> I did. I said I made this. I said Drew, I made this piece for five people. Sorry, <laughs> no. And uh, I might be one of those five. <laughs> but the. Um, I think the overwhelming response so far has been uh, one of uh, real high approval. People love the work. Um, there's a lot of, um, I think, emotive responses to it as well. Yes. Um, I found myself, uh, even in the entrance, when you walk in, you, you see this, this the, the first bus, and you hear about the um, the quarry where the marble was sort of mined from in, in Italy and how it got there. Um, the combination of the story and the sense of history and place matched with the really beautiful music and this perfect accompanying voice. It was a bit manipulative, but it worked like a charm. You know, I think I made a film. Yeah. I don't think it's 
that, you know, when I listen to it, I'm like, ah, this, you know, you know, this is a movie, you know. But the the music also uh, is something that I think really helps to carry the story as well. Um, can you talk a little bit about the music, um, yeah. how, like, who performed it, uh, how you placed sure. it? So the music, um, I was originally going to do all of the music, and I usually write all the music and do all the music myself, um, mostly just because it costs money to, you know, but I, I have a musical background and uh, played instruments when I was a kid, and my dad's a songwriter, and so I kind of like grew up around music, and also music was always a part of my studio practice, because I would constantly be listening to music, I would just listen to hours and hours and hours, you know, when you're working on a piece and you're spending hundreds of hours on something, that is always with music, and so it was already already a big part of my artistic practice, and um, so um, I wrote all of the music um, to kind of be like a cinematic, you know, kind of feeling, and then, um, but I am... And then I sent it over to my friend, uh, Br 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 Brianna Kelly, um, um, and she is a pianist and, a, and a, just an amazing, um, you know, artist too. And um, she kind of brought my music to life, where she could um, interpret it into um, something. You know, when I would get the tracks back, I'd be like, did I write this? You know, it was just so much more beyond. You know, I think I think my my capabilities are very are, are very minimal, and I, and I feel like I have a very natural way of, of writing music, but kind of sending that out, you know, where I, I was just writing in a computer program and sending it off to somebody that translates it back to me, and I, you know, I'd be like, I guess I did write that, but it's just, I think she was able to, um, arrange it in such a way that I'm just like, that I really feel like the words are floating on a sea of this music. And we talk about your musical influences because I kept returning to Sufjan Stevens, David yeah. Johnston, right? this, these sort of yeah. beautiful subtle piano works. Um, yeah. When you're writing, do you have any sort of reference in mind or um, does it just come from the uh, Cinematic music, really. Um, I would say um, I'm really interested um, in the manipulative quality that 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 soundtrack music has, um, and I so whenever I'm writing music for any of my pieces, which, which um, I think I try to emulate that as as much as possible. You know, where I use these very like emotive chords and these chord changes that are meant to be, you know, to kind of touch like that part of all my listeners. You do it quite well. Um, I, I wanted to ask too about the voices. Yeah. They're all very distinct. Yeah, they are. Um, and you know, there's there are definitely some some curious uh, <laughs> decisions with uh, you know, the young girl voicing the, the the painting of the young girl. Yeah. Um, I got a girl. The, there's a painting of a young girl from 1879, and I got a girl of the same age to um, read. The chapter about her. We're talking about the fraught history of the river. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. About the fraught history of the river. Or the the, the, the Garden of Eden and. Uh, and are we talking about the best destiny? Yes. Yeah, not a like, best destiny. Sorry. Yes. The fraught history yes. of the river. It felt like that. Yeah. Destiny. Which when I originally sent it off to her and got it back, and you get you know I, you know kids how they read things is very this very sing singy songy way you know they're, and la 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 and it's like but it, you know we we. Just, we start with this young girl, and we end up with, with, with you know, best destiny, and um, and it was just, and she brings it back to me in this very happy sing song. You're right. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so I had to write her mom a little bit of a letter, like, you know, I need this, like, the tone needs to change for sure. And how did you find each of these the voice actors? The internet. The internet yeah. is the most amazing place in the world. <laughs> yes. Um. Okay, so uh, I'm too afraid to go either too deep into detail on many of the pieces, but I think it's it's best to be. Don't you have any spoilers? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, is there any particular chapter though that particularly resonates with you? Um, it changes. You know, I think with any artist, I think you have little love affairs with each piece, and then you kind of fall out of love with. You know what I mean? So I think. Ones that I was really into like a weeks ago are not so much the ones I'm into now, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, I guess 
Um, I wanted to know the questions if there are any, but the first, the last thing I want to uh, address is um, the future. Yeah. What comes from here? Um, um, yeah, that's a good question. Because I think, you know, I think my art, my art practice is. I see myself. My art practice is really research. You know, if you see all of the um, all of the connections that I've made, you know, where I connect. You know, the Apollo 8 space mission to Manifest Destiny to um, the Hamley's Comet and all these things that I reference. I think my art practice is really much about like sitting down and doing like intense research, and uh, that is where like uh, the majority of this came. And then also, I think where I'm gravitating more and more towards writing too. Um, and then also, you know, I'm kind of questioning like this piece. I was like, what is this? Like, I don't even know. I don't even know if it's so I think and then also you know realizing my, myself that I made a film and you know something and just being like so I think the future I'm considering writing a book next or um, or even making a film or um, but I do have a next project uh, with the public library this is the year for them in my um, that I'm doing for photo focused um, and I'm also working um um, with um, Jim D'Amico, um, who is a photo his historian. Um, so we are tackling um, the archive that um, uh, that our public library has, um, and we are um, choosing photos out of their archive and making soundtracks for them. Um, and then Jim is doing a lot of the text um, and the research for that. So that's what's coming out in October. But after that, book album, I was like actually making like a music, a music album or um, film, I don't know. But that's also assuming that we have a future, I suppose, yeah, too. I uh, know, right? Um, yeah, because also like there's there's so many parts, uh, I think, you know, they're, they're interconnected uh, threads yeah, they're, throughout the chapters. For sure. And there's, you know, you talk about the, there's the use of across the universe. Yeah. Is the only, I think the only existing music in the, is that right? Yeah, I, yeah. The piece? Yeah, because there is, um, uh, there's a piano there in, in, in the library, so I knew I needed, I knew I needed something played on that piano, and at the time I was watching Peter Jackson's, um, what was that? Get Back. Get Back, I was watching that. And usually that's, I kind of use, if I'm making decisions about my artwork, I usually use events in my own life to, to, to kind of like make those choices, you know. Um, and I was like, okay, it's got to be a Beatles song. You know, um, and so I chose um, across the universe, and um, but that was also connects to John Milton. Connects to John Milton. Yeah, he was the first. He um, he coined the words the word space with um, how we know it today as the um, as the heavens beyond this. So um, and and that is kind of like where we end too on on the tour with the Apollo 8 astronauts. Yeah, we end with the Apollo 8. So we start with the creation myth, um, of the myth from this land. Um, um, I'm from the Shawnee and the Miami nations. Um, and then we end with another one, when the Apollo 8 mission reads back uh, the book of Genesis back to Earth while they're looking at it. We have covered so much ground in this discussion, <laughs> and we've sort of found different pathways to get there. Um, I'm glad that we're now starting with the <laughs> The, the genesis of the piece. Yeah. Um, at Which the very the top. Yes, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, I want to give anybody a chance to ask questions, but also I know that only one of you has seen the piece, I believe. So, so Sora, what's your question? <laughs> oh, 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 oh wait, that one. Yeah. Wait, so why, why did we make the piece? Why did I what? Make it. Oh, that's a great question. I don't know. Why do I make anything? I still ask that. I don't know. Yeah, and it was really, you know, doing research about these things, it was really the things that I could, um, the things about those pieces that, um, one, that I could, like, um, that I knew um, would be interesting, you know, in, 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 in terms of, like, an auditory, like, experience, you know, like, they, they have a grandfather clock that doesn't work anymore, so um, I bring the clock um, back to life so you can hear the clock tick while you're looking at it. Um, but also, it was kind of like um, doing all the research about the pieces, um, 
ones that could um, aid in the narrative that I was trying to weave. So if there was something interesting about something and I knew I could like position it in, 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 in a certain way to, 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 to curve my narrative, and then that's, that's kind of why I chose it. Yeah. Yeah, Jay. You talk about the intense research. Uh, yes. How do you how do you organize your research? Do you have like a conspiracy wall or mind mapping or is it paper? Very close. I have a Google Doc. <laughs> but I think was I'm trying to think how long it was. So Google Doc was like two hundred pages. Yeah. Like what ended ended up being was like two hundred pages that got narrowed down. So I wonder the piece was forty two minutes. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, also talking about the research of, uh, of uh, some of the sp specific elements that really take you to the, 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 the piece that you're looking at. Um, yeah, there's also like the chimes of it, the fire truck from yeah. the bell from the fire truck. Yeah. From, I forget what year it was. It but um, it could have burned down twice. I forget too. But I think in that, so there's um, there is a, a framed picture at the market tail that. that that shows all of the homes, and so I, t I take you through all the kind of narratives, and um, I kind of bring a live history that we hear the building burning twice, um, we hear people yelling trying to save the building, we hear Haley's comment, go by the white sky, we hear um, a 19th century fire truck, um, yeah. You take us there. I do. Sorry, what's the sound of the comment? Oh, that's a great, I don't know what I found, it. it's, it's like a deep, like, or like shh, it's like that. Well, I'm sorry. Was the sound, sound of a comment? Was like shh. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a good point. Yeah, it was the face. I don't know if there's a better place for us to end the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, if there are no more questions, though, uh, uh, I would encourage you all to go and see uh, special collections. Yeah, I'm gonna give a shout out to AAC. I don't think I would have been the artist I am today without this place, so gotta totally give it to our academy for sure. Well timed.